Microsoft Forms is a very popular component of Microsoft 365 for all sorts of business processes, whether you're gathering feedback from customers or tracking requests from your teams, or even things like working out who's gonna join a new office book club. It is also a very popular jumping off point for new makers who are interested in process automation with Power Automate. It's incredibly easy to, for example, send a forms response into a Teams channel, or to log your responses elsewhere in something like Microsoft Lists, or even assign tasks connected with responses. A couple of weeks ago, Microsoft released a new feature into Forms to allow form creators to let their responders edit their responses. There are a number of situations where I could see this being advantageous. For example, imagine you are using forms to submit some kind of service request and the situation changes, or you gain a little more information and you want to update the request before it's worked on. So let's take a look at how we turn this on and then we're going to look at how it integrates with Power Automate. So here we are in Microsoft Forms and I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new form. I'll just give it a name, put a demo of response edits. I'm gonna put a choice in here and I'm just gonna add a few options in here. I'm not even gonna bother putting anything else in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and come in over tier to settings. You can see that I have the option of allow respondents to edit their responses. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on. I'm gonna to go to collect responses. I'm gonna copy my link and then here I am at this link but in a different user account. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit a response. And you can see that once I've submitted that response, I get the option of save and edit later. So I'm gonna click on that. And then coming back into this user's forms, you can see that I can go to field forms and I have here edit responses demo. I'm gonna click on this. I can go back into the form that I've already submitted and if I want to, I can edit that response and I can change that response here. And jumping back into the form owner, we can see that we have one response here, and this response is now shown as option two, which is the second option that I chose. So that edited response is now live and showing in my, uh, in my responses here. If content like this is valuable to you, then I hope you'll like the video and consider subscribing to the channel so you'll know immediately the next time I release one. So if you've watched other videos on this channel, you'll already know that I'm someone who always thinks about the integration possibilities for Power Platform with any of these types of new features that come out. So as soon as I saw this one, I started wondering how are these form edits stored in the background and what potential does this give us in Power Automate to look at automations that we might put in place that work and play nicely with those form edits. So I really wanted to get into that and look at how you can interact with these edits and the forms that are being edited in Power Automate. So here I am in Power Automate. I've just created a new Cloudflow and I'm going to get a trigger from my forms connector. So you can see that in our forms connector, we really only have two options. We have one trigger when a new response is submitted and one action, get response details. So we usually pair those together because the trigger doesn't get the entire response. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to add this when a new response is submitted. And I'm gonna pick the form that I just created. And I'm just gonna add a compose step here so that we can see the entire response that we get from this trigger. And I'm gonna add that other action. I'm gonna put in response details. I'm going to select the same form again. I'm gonna get my response ID from this trigger above. And we're just gonna take a look at the full details. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then I'm just gonna jump back out of this so that we're in the, um, the flow details here. And I'm gonna go ahead and submit a form. So here I am back in the form again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and submit the form. And I'm gonna save this one to edit later and jumping back into my other user with Flow, I'm just going to refresh my run history and you can see that this succeeded. So let's jump in and take a look at what we get back. So when a new response is submitted, it doesn't show me all the data here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my compose action. You can see that what I get back is that the event type is a response was added. Um, my form ID, I get my form ID and I get the event time. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what was submitted. So I get the answer is question four uh, or option four, the responder's email, and you only get this if it's within your organization. Um, the submission time, and you can see down here I get the whole body. So I've got my question ID here, um, and if you played around with this at all, you'll be familiar with this. So given that there is only one trigger available, the next question is, well, what happens when someone edits a response? The logical thing to think is that the same trigger gets triggered, there's a new response, it sees that edit as a new response, but perhaps the event type is different. Um, so let's go ahead and test this. So here I am back in my user that filled out the form and I'm gonna go ahead and go into my filled form and I'm gonna click on edit response and I'm going to change my response to option one. Now remember that the response now is option one. So I'm going to submit this and back over here in flow, I'm just going to wait for this to update. And I've refreshed this a few more times now and this flow has not triggered. So it seems that perhaps it's not going to trigger. So let me just go in and take a look at this run history for this one that did run. And you can see here, I have option four. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna resubmit this. And what resubmitting is going to do is behave as if this trigger has just happened. So it's gonna get the initial trigger um, the trigger isn't going to fire again. I can't fire a trigger from here, but what I can do is do everything subsequently in the flow that happened because of that trigger. So let's go ahead and resubmit. And if I come down to my get response details, you can see that this is now showing option one. So what's going on there? I've got two responses. I've got the first one, which is showing option four, and showing a submit date and time of 3.48.48. So let's remember that. We're gonna go back into this and take a look at the second time I ran this. And I've still got 3.48.48, but I've got an update. So all that appears to have updated in this get response details is the actual question response. There isn't anything else here that's showing me that this has been updated or edited. Um, and it certainly isn't triggering the flow to run again when that update happens. So it appears as if there's no way using the first party forms connector that Microsoft provides to do anything when a form is edited. You can certainly get that edited response, but you can't trigger the flow and you can't see that the response itself has been edited, that information isn't there. So unless you're tracking the previous response, you would never know that that response had been edited at all. However, outside of just using this first party connector, we do know some stuff about how Form stores its data, and that allows us to do things that the Microsoft built Power Automate connector for Forms simply doesn't. For example, we can pull all the data out of a form using the SharePoint connector and an HTTP request to the Forms API. If you want to see more detail of this, take a look at this video that's linked below that goes through some of the other things that you can do with Forms using that technique. But in this case, we know that that response gives us some data fields that the kind of generic response in Power Automate doesn't. So let's take a look at what we can do using that technique to get a little bit more data out of forms about the edits that have happened with these responses. Okay, so there's a couple of things that I just need to get prepared in order to use the HTTP request technique. The first thing is I'm just going to put a compose in here. I'm gonna rename this tenant ID. I'm just gonna paste the ID of this tenant in here. There, there are other ways that you can grab this information, but for the purposes of this uh, video, I'm not going to go into those. I'm then going to add the profile um, connector because I need to get my user ID. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the SharePoint HTTP connector. So we just get our HTTP request set up like this. The site address is forms.office.com. We do a get request. And then the URI is uh, form API slash API slash tenant ID, slash users, slash user ID, slash forms, and then we look for the form with the form ID of the one that we are 
uh, working on and then we get the responses. So we're just going to go ahead and test this with a previously used trigger and we're just going to take a look at the output of this so you can see that I now have I should have two responses in here so you see I've got my two responses my response number one um, has an answer of option two and my response number two has an answer of option one so that's the second one that I edited and if we just take a look at our start date our submit date so that submit date is still 1548 so that's as we saw before and if we just scroll down and take a look at all of this information here there is literally nothing in this response that would indicate to us that this has been edited um, so let's just go ahead and edit it one more time just to check so back in my other user I'm just going to jump into here again I'm going to edit my response I'm going to change it to option 5 I'm going to submit I'm going to jump back into my flow I'm just going to come into my most recent submission and submit it one more time and if we take a look at these responses so I still have a total of two responses and the answer here is option five but my submit date is still 1548 there still is no other information in here that would indicate to me that this has been edited so if your business process is reliant upon power automate running every time a form is submitted but you want to make sure that a response is stored somewhere or sent somewhere then this editing feature simply isn't going to work for you uh, because there isn't any way to make that flow run and unless you do something complicated like store all the responses somewhere else and then routinely go through all of those responses to see if there have been any edits there isn't really any way to integrate the editing capability into most power automate scenarios with forms that I see. So my initial plan when I was looking at putting this video together was to explore this topic and by this point provide you with some workarounds so that you could enable responder form editing and with a few edits to your flows you could carry on working as normal. But after looking into this, it seems that Microsoft has created a confounding problem and the editing of forms responses is simply incompatible with the way that most people use Power Automate with forms integration. Now, could I build something that would give you the capability of seeing if there had been an edit on a form response? Certainly, but we would be dealing with different data sources, we would be dealing with scheduled flows, there would be some kind of lag that would be going on, um, and it would be pretty time consuming and costly in terms of interactions with um, the form's API in order to do that. And really that isn't the point because something like integrating forms features with Power Automate should be a fairly foundational level that any maker can can grapple as I said at the start of this video this is something that a lot of people who are just starting out like a lot of people who are just starting out the first thing they do is integrate something um, with forms so apparently we can get some information about interaction with forms from the Microsoft 365 audit logs but that seems a rather extreme escalation to be necessary to simply identify if a form response has been edited as well. And I'm not entirely sure that there's any practical way to surface that data. So if you have another workaround that isn't to do with audit logs and isn't to do with just keeping a completely separate repository of every response that you get, then please drop it in the comments because at this point, I've kind of run out of time to play with this and I've run out of ideas. The issue of the quality and depth of Microsoft's first party Power Platform connectors is something I feed back to them on at every opportunity I get. As we get more features in Microsoft 365, there are simply more gaps that exist between what you can do with the GUI and what you can do with Power Automate or even with Graph API requests. 
Elsewhere in Microsoft 365, this set of complaints is often the other way round, with for example admin features that surface first in PowerShell and then they take a long time to make their way into the user interface. With many small business admins having no interest in delving into PowerShell, this is a problem, but it isn't the same type of problem. In general, where I've run into these types of issues, they're with features that limit Power Platform's capabilities, not break existing ones. For example, most recently I looked into the ability to add Microsoft Forms to virtual appointments bookings, which you can do from the GUI, but there appears to be no way to directly interact with this data on an appointment by appointment basis from Power Automate or using a Graph API request. This limited my ability to design a solution I thought should be possible, but it didn't break anything. Those users that are passionate about technology and want to get started in being makers with low code are exactly the people who will be starting out with simple automations with Microsoft Forms using Power Automate and be excited and incentivized to try out new features like turning on response editing. These same makers are likely to also think that because Microsoft builds both tools, they will have ensured that they play nicely together. It won't be until a few weeks later that they go to service a request from their manager or even from the CEO, and they think they're dealing with one problem, and they find out something else because it got edited in forms two or three times in the interim, and they simply didn't know because they were relying on their flow. This is the type of thing that can undermine a new maker's confidence in Power Automate, but it can also start to erode confidence organizations have in low code and citizen developers. And it's for this reason that I continue to implore Microsoft at every opportunity I get to really start considering Power Platform connectors and the capabilities provided to makers alongside the release of new features in Microsoft 365. I've said many times that I believe that everything you can do from the GUI, you should be able to do from Power Automate if we want Power Automate to truly be a way of automating everything in Microsoft 365. For now, my advice is that you simply can't turn on response editing if you rely on Power Automate to do anything with your form responses. If you're in a position to get this message out in your organization, then please share it. Or you may choose to simply not enable this feature in forms from an admin perspective if you know that integration with Power Automate and forms is used in your organization. And see a link below to how you would go about doing that. Both technologies work great. They simply don't play well together right now. And hopefully this is something that Microsoft is gonna fix in its first party connector sooner rather than later, or at least update how the data is stored behind Forms so that workarounds like the SharePoint HTTP call to the Forms API can provide some sort of resolution. I hope this information has been useful to you. This isn't quite what I was aiming to do with this video when I started out looking into this feature, but all the same, I hope this has given you information to help you in your process of automating your tasks in your business. If I get any updates on this, then I will be sure to share it. And until the next video, bye bye.